Hey everyone, my name is Caitlin Rogers. I'm a fine arts major at Winthrop University, specializing in painting and printmaking. Um, even though I specialize in painting and printmaking, most of my work is multimedia or interdisciplinary. I enjoy working a lot with installations because this lets me experiment with different ways to involve the viewer with my work, whether it be physically, emotionally, through instructions, or by letting the audience choose how they interact with my pieces. I believe that these additional interactions with my work encourages the viewer to become more involved with my art and also creates more personalized and intense encounters. The concepts of my work are usually directed by my own personal narratives and memories. I enjoy, I enjoy working this way because I have intimate knowledge of the emotions that I'm aiming to elicit. Helps me feel more at home with the piece and it makes me feel more confident in giving this piece to my audience because I felt this and I know that I can help them feel this as well. My shapes, colors, textures, and subject matter are often influenced by anatomy. I don't just think anatomy is cool, um, but I'm also fascinated by the duality of it and because the functions and the shapes of the human body are universally similar, but everyone has their own unique experiences with their physicality in life. Therefore, this incorporation of anatomy lets me utilize its polarity, making the work accessible to everyone while allowing for individualized interpretations. The Smiths is inspired by the sexism that many women experience when they're trying to get an accurate and attentive medical diagnosis. The sexism exists because of the usual damaging stereotypes that women face, such as being hysterical and hormonal when they're not and because of a life-threatening lack of knowledge about feminine health. I believe we still see misconceptions about feminine health because women weren't really included or encouraged to participate in medical studies until around the 90s, and this wasn't really seen as an issue until about 15 years ago. When most people think of female issues, they will default to something like hormones, menstrual cycles, pregnancy, um, which are all absolutely incredible influences on feminine health. But solely considering these factors has created kind of a tunnel vision that often prevents doctors from making a diagnosis from anything but these things or even from looking further into the problem because they just assume that there's no other way that there can be any other issues other than those things. Heart failure is a good example of this point. This is stereotypically seen as a man's disease, as it is the leading cause of death for men in America, but it's also the leading cause of death in women. In fact, in comparison, more women actually die from heart failure than men do. And this is not just from complications due to the disease, but also since there are many women who are not diagnosed in time to be safe because their symptoms aren't recognized. There's also many women who suffer from inadequate aftercare because women are wrongly thought to recover faster from heart issues than men do. Like most medical tests, heart failure studies have generally only included men, and we are now just seeing that these symptoms for women are different. Uh, to put this in kind of a perspective, heart disease has been around since the Egyptians, and it's been intensely studied in the United States since the 1950s. But just until about five years ago, we began to figure out that women experience heart issues differently than men do. After learning about this, I began to reflect on my own experiences and how I've seen many women I'm close to have their quality of life severely impaired because of symptoms and illnesses that would have been otherwise detected or diagnosed if the medical professionals they went to listened to them, took them seriously, and maybe even just looked further into the problem. 
For instance, one of these women that I'm close to has been having terrible neurological symptoms for about three or four years. She couldn't even get out of bed without fainting or having severe tunnel vision. Um, she had to ground herself and just kind of stand there just to be able to walk across a room. Um, that's, that's not normal, but almost every doctor she went to blamed her symptoms on her menstrual cycle, her hormones, and one doctor even accused her of making her symptoms up and said that everyone experiences what she does, which is absolutely not true. Um, she was eventually diagnosed by the first female sh doctor she went to with a severe life-threatening pituitary gland issue, which is totally unrelated to her periods and anything to do with her hormones or menstrual cycle. This is just one of the many stories I've listened to and unfortunately they're abundant. And it's personally a topic that I haven't seen discussed. So after learning about how common these experiences are among different women, I felt the need to say something, which is why I created Dismissed. The focal point of Dismissed is a biomorphic archway that is blanketed with monotyped fabric. The fabric is abstracted to appear like unhealthy looking flesh with its sickly cut looking colors and patterns. I created these colors and patterns by making gross flesh tones and paired them with pinks um, and then ran them through the press three or four times to create creases and get different textures from the strings and pieces of paper that I used to give them just something else. Then I created the dripping effect with rubbing alcohol and water-based ink. The colors that I chose to make these fabrics are warm pinkish hues that not only reference the human body, but are also stereotypically associated with women, which adds some femininity to the piece. The tool coming from the archway is distressed um, by tearing it and burning it, and it's complemented by transcriptions of interviews that I collected from some of the many women who have experienced such sexism. Additionally, these interviews are meant to be listened to with the included headphones as the piece is viewed. The interviews are overlaid and played simultaneously as to overwhelm the viewer and to show that these experiences are common, happening to the majority rather than a few isolated cases. On the floor facing towards the archway and the viewer are screen prints that resemble old medical drawings from the female body during the 1500s. These antiquated images may be visually interesting, but they're not accurate, which makes them symbolic of the outdated ideas that many doctors still share about feminine health. Additionally, the way the screen prints lay on top of the transcribed experiences of the interview woman further represents how these views perpetuate sexism in the healthcare system by the way they obstruct the words. Dismissed is made to be an interactive installation. The viewer is encouraged to sit within the archway and listen to the interviews while viewing the prints. In this moment, the viewer is isolated and put on display with the rest of the piece. This vulnerability in combination with the overwhelming audio, looming archway, and sickly fabrics serves to create emotions of loneliness, frustration, confusion, and intimidation, which simulates the feelings that many women are forced to go through after trying to receive adequate and informed medical attention. And that's all. Thank you guys.